the loop should be parallel to the E field and the direction of propagation. So let's say the E field is oriented this way. The wave is propagating in this direction. We have free space, so I'll put K hat here. And then in this case, E cross H, so the H field, the B field, would have to be oriented direct or oriented directly into the screen. So as the wave comes propagating through here, it will cut straight through this loop. And this will give us a maximum response for uh, receiving the signal. Then we can use Faraday's law to find the H field. So V induced across the gap is closed integral of E dot DL, which is minus the surface integral of B dot DS. Now if this, if we had multiple loops here, if it kind of wrapped around in a circle here, if we had another, if it just kept having more and more loops, then the, the, we would have multiple current loops, and so the response would be N, N loops, N times uh, magnet increased by a factor of capital N, however many loops we had. Now here, there's no mention of any multiple loops, so we're just going to say N is equal to 1. So we need to come up with an expression for our B field, and we also need to integrate it over this, the area of our loop. And if we can assume our B field is uniform over the loop, the surface of the loop, it would greatly simplify our surface integral. So under what conditions can we assume the B field is uniform over this loop? Well, if the loop is electrically small, electrically small, so I can say here if um, the diameter diameter is a lot smaller than a wavelength, we can say it's electrically small, and then we can say the wavelength is changing so slowly that as it's the wave is propagating through over this distance, d, diameter, the value of b is not going to change very much if the diameter of the loop is much smaller than a wavelength. So let's calculate what the wavelength is. We have lambda is c over f, 3 times 10 to the 8th over 915 megahertz. So we get lambda is 33 centimeters. And so the diameter of the loop is 2 centimeters. And that's quite a bit smaller than 33 centimeters. So we can say that the loop is electrically small. And we can assume the B field is constant over the area of the loop which means we can turn this integral into just multiplying b times a, the area of the loop. Next, we are free to choose any time reference. So we can assume that the magnetic flux density has the following form. b is equal to n hat, n hat coming straight out of the loop, is b naught times cosine omega t. Now notice there's no spatial variation here in x, y, and z because we're assuming it's going to be constant over the width of the loop at any moment in time. Now Faraday's law becomes V induced or V gap is minus D dt at the surface integral and I'm going to put in B so we have n hat B naught cosine omega t and then I have dot n hat ds. So this is going to be minus, I can take out the constant, b naught. And notice we have n hat dotted with n hat. So n hat dotted with n hat is just 1. And we still have minus, oh, we just have, my, sorry, we uh, still have d d d t. And that is operating on this cosine omega t, since that is changing in time. And then we just have s d s. And that's just the area of the loop, A. So what we wind up with here, after taking the time derivative, we're going to have minus B naught omega times minus sine omega t 
times a, and the minus signs cancel, we get b naught omega a sine omega t. We are given that v induced, or v gap, at the peak is equal to 0.5 millivolts, and that's also at the peak. So, and um, a is pi r squared, so pi times 0.1 squared, which is about 3.142 times 10 to the minus fourth meters squared. We can now also use the constitutive relation that B is equal to mu h, where mu is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. So now we have everything we need to solve for h. h, not the peak, is V gap peak over mu naught a omega, because the peak of the sinusoid, yeah, sine of what we got, will also be equal to 1. So what we end up with here is 0.22 milliamps per meter. Now, if we were to tilt the loot, loop by 60 degrees relative to the position of the maximum response, now what voltage would be developed across the gap? Well, now we can write our B field. Before we had N hat, now I'm going to write it with, it's in a different direction. It's B hat, B naught cosine omega t. So now, in our integral, where before we had N hat dotted with N hat, now we're going to have B hat dotted with N hat. And so this is going to be, they're both unit vectors, so we're going to have 1 times 1 times cosine of 60 degrees, the angle between them, which is equal to 0.5. So now V gap at the peak at this new angle, as long as we're at 60 degrees here, is going to be equal to B hat dotted with N hat times B naught A omega. And we already know the strength of our incoming waves, so B dot n hat, we just calculate as 0.5. B naught is going to be mu naught times the h that we calculated in the last problem, which is 0.22 milliamps per meter. And then we also multiply times a and omega. So the final result here that we get is going to be 0.25 millivolts um, at the peak. So that's half of the voltage we got when the loop was oriented in the best position, which would have the B flux cutting straight through the surface of the loop. I'll just finish up this section by just saying that, um, you know, earlier we said Ampere's law forms the physics basis for the voltage current relation of a capacitor. And here we can see that Faraday's law forms the physics basis of the voltage current relationship for an inductor. So here I have drawn a wire coil with n turns, uh, and the length of it is L meters. So this is L. The cross-sectional area of each of these loops of the coil is S, has an area of A. And we're going to assume that the current is increasing in time, so di dt is greater than zero. So by the right-hand rule, the magnetic field in the coil is going to be in the downward direction, in the positive n hat direction. We'll define that as a positive n hat direction. So db dt is also getting bigger and bigger in the n hat direction. If we apply Faraday's law to just one turn of the coil, we get v induced for one turn is equal to minus the area, the surface integral of db dt dotted with n hat ds. That's a t. The B field for a long coil can be calculated by applying Biot-Savart law, if you remember we talked about that a while ago. 
to the coil. I'm not going to go through that here, but you can find that written out in the book, the, in the notes, the company notes for this lecture, there's a section of the book that is referred to. So instead, I'm just going to, for now, just put in the B field for a long coil. If you use B of art, you'll get mu naught, N, the number of turns, I, current, varying in time, over L, the length of the coil, times N hat. And that's dotted with N hat, DS. So if we pull the constants out and we set n hat dotted with n hat is 1, we're going to get minus mu naught n over L di dt and ds here, which is just equal to A, the area of the uh, circular loop. So we got a negative value, a negative number here, and that's consistent with Lenz's law. And so we would actually expect here, V induced actually is in the opposite direction than we drew it. We drew it in the direction of positive DL, which is in, dictated by positive N hat. So we would expect it because of this minus sign to actually be pointing in the opposite direction. So from Lenz's law, V induced for one turn wants to push current upward in the coil, and this would set up a secondary B field that opposes the increasingly strong downward direction directed B field. So if we sum up V induced over, for one turn over all of the turns of the coil, we're going to get the total induced V across the entire inductor. So V induced is N turns times V induced for one turn. And this is equal to mu naught N squared A over L times DI DT. Now we didn't talk about inductance much in this class, but in the lecture notes for this lecture, you'll see there's some sections of the book that you can look at where if we were to look at this equation, we could identify this as being equal to L, the inductance of a long coil. And so this means that we achieved our goal here. We wrote a voltage current relationship for the inductor starting from Faraday's law. So in summary, we find that the inductor voltage V is equal to L di dt. This results from the inductor's attempt to counteract changes in its internal B flux, which comes from the increasing current, passing through the cross section of each coil turn. So the inductor is a circuit device that's based completely on Faraday's law.